What's going on, everyone? We've got a fun show lined out for you today, including the latest Jerry Judy trade rumors, along with some really important Russell Wilson injury news. Before we get to all that, though, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so, because when we crossed 12,000 subscribers here at the channel, I did 12 shots for 12K, and you guessed it. For 13,000 subscribers, we're going to do 13 shots. But here's the new wrinkle. I won't be picking the shots. I'm going to let producer Tex pick all the shots, so it'll be a mystery for me what I'm taking shots of. So if you want to see that, hit that sub button. I know 134 people watching right now have not subscribed. So help grow this channel, and in return, you get the best free Broncos YouTube content. Welcome in to the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. We've got some important Jerry Judy trade rumors to hit on today. But first things first, I do want to get a really big story out to you guys, and that is the latest on Russell Wilson. So Ian Rappaport tweeted out this morning, Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson had arthroscopic surgery on his right knee following 2022, a procedure to fix an issue that had nagged him for a few seasons. He is back working out and throwing after the minor scope and should be fine for OTAs. He'll be at full health for 2023. Now, I have been one of the more harsher critics on Russell Wilson, you know, this past year or so, and I can admit that. But I think we can all admit the best interest for Denver is Russell Wilson gets back to his old Pro Bowl status, and hopefully this knee surgery helps get the cobwebs out that have sort of just, you know, plagued him or been a bad shadow right between the hamstring and the shoulder I know this is not really related to those two but who knows maybe this is what's really gonna shake the rust off and Russ can get back to Russ so let's send the guys some love spam three down in the comment section below that way he knows Broncos country is wishing him well in his recovery and it's in everyone's best interest like I said for Russell Wilson to get back to Russell Wilson now the trade rumors they're back did they ever really go away, though, right? The Jerry Judy trade rumors have sort of become a Six Flags roller coaster. It's like, when are you going to go out of business? Because this has just been going on for too long. But I think if we're going to go in chronological order, the story really begins about a week ago when Albright tweeted out, source confirms multiple teams have called inquiring about wide receiver Jerry Judy. Price tag remains high. Team asking for first or high second plus a player. Patriots, Browns, and Cowboys, who were interested at trade deadline last year, among others inquiring. So with the Cowboys getting Brandon Cooks, we can sort of rule them out. But the Pats and the Browns seem like they are very much in the mix to land Jerry Judy potentially. Let's move forward in time a little bit here. Mike Kliss, not long later, the same day, tweeted out, while well, lots of teams have called on Broncos wide receivers, Judy and Sutton, including some who have been aggressive, which I think is the Cleveland Browns, it doesn't appear Denver is interested in moving them per source. So when we had that tweet, it was like, okay, it sounds like Denver's got an asking price. No one's coming close. They're not dying to trade those two players away. Judy and Sutton don't want to get traded. They haven't requested a trade. So if they're not going to get what they're worth. They're not going to move on from them. Well, let's move forward in time now. Most recently, we had this from Albright yesterday. Dallas traded for Brandon Cooks, but Cleveland continues to pursue possible trade for Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy per source. New England has also looked into Judy, but thus far has not been willing to pay requested price tags. So let's kind of break all this down for you guys, right? The Broncos want a first or a second plus a player, according to these reports. Now, New England does have a first to offer. It's the 14th overall pick. My guess is... They don't believe Judy is worth the first 14th overall pick. Maybe if they had like the 26th overall pick, they'd be more interested because a couple of receivers will be off the board. But there's a good chance that the Patriots could pick the first wide receiver in this draft at 14. Now, we're going to look at a report in just a moment, but the Patriots may have already made an offer that was not rich enough for Denver. The big point I have here is if the Broncos are comfortable with a wide receiver room of Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick, they may ultimately decide, you know what, we might not get what we initially wanted for Judy, but we'd rather get something and not have a wide receiver room with three good players when we plan on running the ball a metric shit ton in 2023 for a better lack, lack of a better term. 
So I want to know this from everyone watching right now. And this is the pinned comment. So go down below and let me know. Would you trade Judy for a second and a player, right? If no one's offering a first. And that would, of course, be ideal for George and Sean Payton. But if the call doesn't come in for a first, would you do a second and a player? Let me know. You two might stick an ad break when I'm done talking. So take advantage of it and give me a T for trade or P for pass. So Mary Kay Cabot, she's a Browns beat reporter, wrote an article about Jerry Judy. And I thought you guys might want to see it. Here's what she wrote. The Broncos don't plan to trade Judy. They're 2020 number 15 overall pick out of Alabama unless someone makes them an offer they can't refuse, another source said. That offer would ideally include a first-round pick. But Benjamin Albright of Denver's KOA FM reports that the Broncos would listen to an offer for a second round and a player, which the Browns could possibly pull off. The Broncos supposedly at least pondered an offer for a second and a fourth rounder, possibly from the Patriots. To me, it sounds like Denver wants a first, but no one's offering a first. So they're going to ask for a big price, but they might come down for it. And that would be very interesting to see. Is Denver secretly all along really trying to trade Jerry Judy? Because if so, they might come off their first round pick ledge. But if they don't want to trade Judy unless they get blown away for an offer they can't refuse, then it sounds like Jerry Judy would stay in Denver and there's no trade, right? To me, it sounds like if you move on from Jerry Judy right now, if you're the Broncos, you might really regret that, right? That feels like a move that could haunt you. With the way Judy ended last season, you might look back at this trade and go, I know that we felt like we could have a really good offense with just Sutton and Patrick and a rookie wide receiver or some free agent, which they were looking at Adam Thielen and Alan Lazard. So if you feel confident in that, then... Maybe a trade isn't the worst thing in the world. But I want to show you guys, we'll start with Jerry Judy's stats uh, from the end of last season, weeks 13 through 18. These are the last six weeks of the year. 37 receptions, 523 yards, and three touchdowns, okay? If you took those stats right there, that six-week stretch, and you expanded it over the entirety of a season, here's what the numbers come out to be. 103 receptions. 1,400 yards, and eight touchdowns, right? That's if you take those six weeks, prorate it over 17 games. Those are numbers that are worthy of it, worthy of a first-round pick. The issue is those aren't real numbers, right? He's never done that before. He's never gone over 1,000 yards. So I'm guessing a lot of teams are going to look at those numbers and think, yeah, I think those are worth a second-rounder because if we get that potential, that's absolutely worth a second-round pick. But we also are banking on him getting to that point. It's never actually been done before. So for that, we're going to hold on to our first and pick a receiver in the first round who we could have for longer, for cheaper, and might actually be that receiver. Now, I did find this tweet very interesting from Broncos reporter Troy Rank, who tweeted out, One scenario I have heard is Judy for a second or third rounder and cornerback Greg Newsom. Not sure if Browns would entertain that, but they are not out. And Broncos Payton clearly looking to reconfigure wide receiver room. So let's get to know Greg Newsom a little better here. He's the Browns first round pick from two seasons ago out of Northwestern. And he's been their CB2, CB3 through two seasons so far. Now, Greg Newsom last season wasn't all that spectacular. Cleveland moved him to that nickel position. He was not thriving there. He wasn't drafted to be a slot guy, right? He was drafted to be an outside corner. He's likely going to go back to being an outside corner because that attempt did not work well. But as a whole, I'm going to look at this half glass full for a moment. You can get a top five cornerback duo. I mean, really, Patrick Sertan and anyone is a top five cornerback duo. It's kind of like how Wayne Gretzky and his brother are the number one and two brother combination in the NHL. And Wayne Gretzky did 99% of the heavy lifting. But top five cornerback duo? Because Greg Newsom would be a really good corner to pair with Sertan. I don't know if Damari Mathis is really ready to be that starting CB2. Plus, you pick up a top 100 draft pick, which you kind of sorely need with only five picks in this upcoming draft. That could be something that Payton's really consider, right? It might not be great for a rebuild, 
But if you think Greg Newsom is going to be a longtime starting corner in this NFL, and you want to kind of tighten up that defense and pick up a draft pick, and that's the best offer you do get, maybe Denver does accept that. Although I don't think that would be a very smart move. Now, what, what, what could make this trade a lot easier is looking at the other two starting receivers in Denver, right? Do the Paytons have a lot of faith that Cortland Sutton is going to get back to that 2019 form? And Tim Patrick is going to rebound really nicely off of a ACL injury. If they, are, if they are buyers in both of those beliefs, well, then they look at their options and go, we've got two good receivers. We could pick up a starting cornerback and a draft pick. Maybe this is the best play for the entirety of the team for just one player. You know what I'm saying? So I wonder if Sean Payton feels that this team could be successful with Cortland Sutton and Patrick. And then, like I said, you take those two. Yeah, you lose Judy. That's a bummer. But when you add another starting player on defense, because you've already got two good receivers, and you pick up a draft pick, which you can just use for a good chunk of needs they have at this moment, maybe the Broncos brass is going to feel that's what's best for this team. In conclusion, though, if I'm Denver, I really would only trade Jerry Judy for a first-round pick. I know I kind of just did a half-glass full take on maybe it wouldn't be an absolute disaster, but at the same time, Go back to those numbers we looked at, right? Those 2022 projected stats. That's what you drafted him 15th overall to be. You finally got close to that, and not just in like a two-week span, right? Six weeks is a good sample size, in my opinion. I don't know if you want to bail on that just as you found it, and then Jerry Judy goes to the Browns and is an awesome receiver, and you're like, wow, we traded him away for a good corner, but do cornerbacks win games? Not really. Look at Sertan. He could be the best. He might be. The, you could arguably make the case he's the best cornerback in the league right now, and he can only do so much. And then a draft pick that's just a lottery ticket that might be good, but very well might not be good. So it's either first or nothing for me if I'm Denver, and I'd hold on to Jerry Judy. But we'll see what ends up happening. Now, before we get on out of here, I just want to give some shout outs to those of you that shared the last two videos we posted over on Twitter. I missed a couple of them. My apologies. But Billy, Jack, John, Paul, Rodney, James, thank you guys so much for sharing our previous videos on social media, helping to grow our channel, get more eyeballs on our channel, and thus more subscribers and then more content for you. So beautiful YouTube circle of life right there. Appreciate everyone who has shared our videos before. If you haven't already, why don't you guys uh, give it a shot on Twitter. Tag me at Matthew Petey, and I'll give you a shout-out on a future show.